Hello everyone, thank you for joining again. I'm Shamal Arif, part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. So to continue on our uh, Kubernetes series, in this video we're just going to see how to use kubectl to access the cluster uh, and how do you use the Kubernetes dashboard. All right, so we are, uh, we created a cluster, uh, just a, a test cluster through quick create and I'm on the details page of the test cluster. So if I scroll down and on the left hand side where we see the resources uh, over here in the quick start section, you can take a look at a couple of things. So the quick start gives you access to how do you get access to the cluster using the kube config file. Uh, and then you can use the, the, the standard kube uh, tool to look at uh, how do you actually create the application and get connected. So the access kube config gives you the details. Uh, it requires you to download the latest uh, or the CLI version, which is uh, at least uh, above than 2.6.4. You can check the OCI, uh, CLI version by OCI-V, create a directory in your uh, home directory, and then just download the kube config file by using the command that is listed out here. In the command, basically it's using the OCI CLI and uh, in the case of cluster ID, using the cluster ID, which is for the specific cluster that you are currently on. And it saves by default in, in the kubecon.cube slash config file. If you want to give a different file, you can always just put a different file uh, listed over here. So I already have a cube, I have already done this couple of steps, but I'll quickly show you where my cube config file exists. So let's take a look at OCI CLI version. Uh, I also have saved the config file, the cube config file in this location. And uh, I have kubectl already installed in my, uh, in my laptop. So now I'll just do kubectl slash cluster info. And this actually uh, tells me where my kube Kubernetes master is running uh, and the kube DNS, which gets automatically started as well. I'll just do a kube get, all, get nodes to uh, get a list of the nodes, which are my worker nodes created in the, OC, in the container engine for Kubernetes. So I had three worker nodes and three availability domains, which is showing that these are the three worker nodes. The name is actually taken from a private IP. So the private IP that you see here is just the private IP of the quick cluster that we created and uh, it takes the private IP of it. So if we have a public IP uh, and if we have a private public uh, cluster, like the worker nodes are in public subnets, they, the, the naming would probably just show you the public IPs in there. Look at kubectl get uh, pods to see a list of the pods. Uh, I can also take a look at what are my services which are running right now. So I just have like no particular services running uh, and you are actually just using their standard kubectl to connect to your Kubernetes cluster. Now that we have connected uh, to the Kubernetes cluster using kubectl, uh, let's take a look at the next steps which uh, it makes you do for the accessing the Kubernetes dashboard. So if you want to access the Kubernetes dashboard, uh, by default the Kubernetes dashboard service account uh, has had, don't have doesn't have the administrative privileges to uh, get a list of all the different uh, services or namespaces or other individual components running in the Kubernetes cluster. So what this uh, process does is that it creates a service account by the name of OKE admin uh, and then attaches this service account uh, to the cluster admin role by creating a cluster role binding. So there is a cluster admin role which pre-exists which basically gives you a complete access of the cluster. So it creates a service account and it and creates a cluster role binding attaching the service account of OKE admin to your cluster admin role. Once uh, you create this YAML file, you apply it, uh, it creates that service account, it creates a, cr a cluster role binding and then uh, the token which is available as part of this service account, you use that token to actually log in into your uh, Kubernetes dashboard. So I followed that process and uh, I'm logged into the Kubernetes dashboard. And the Kubernetes dashboard on the left hand side is all the different uh, resources that you see. So within the cluster, what are the different namespaces that exist? 
So you have the cube system which uh, consists of all the namespaces within your uh, system itself like controller, namespace, uh, controller, uh, pods, uh, scheduler, bunch of the, the system pods. Uh, then you have a cube public namespace and the default namespace. Uh, you, what are the persistent volumes if they exist in your case? What are the different nodes which are available? So you have the different nodes and the labels which are attached to the nodes. Uh, it gives the details on CPU re requests and CPU limits, etc. The storage classes which exist. Uh, and then additional things like uh, cron jobs or replica sets, stateful sets, any ingress controllers you have, config maps. So all the details that are available in your cluster basically. So that's all on the series on Kubernetes level 100. Thanks for joining.